really gig beetles zipping around on the top. Always fun to see the various levels in this tank. Always makes me think of canopy in the rainforest, the understory below. So much life in this tank, always so many moving things. Just a real pleasure to watch all the time. This big old aquarium barely fits in the window sill here. Just added in the dirt layer and I just kind of want it to look nice. So I'm gonna pat it down with the spatula. And then I'm gonna get any little bits of dirt that are hanging up there on the sidewall off because this is the face of the tank, the most important side. All right, gonna cover this with two inches of sand, this inch of soil, mixture of, in this case, coconut fiber, compost, and topsoil. So I've got the hose coming in from outside and this is the trick for filling your tank without ruining the sand layer and stirring up a bunch of dust from the sand. And after this fills with water, you're gonna be surprised how clear the water column is because I used the right kind of sand in the first place, concrete sand. Looks like this, yes a few kitchen utensils were sacrificed to the cause and a plate. And then it will be time to poke the plants into the soil. An inch of soil down there below two inches of sand. As the water is filling up here in this tank, I am slowly by hand poking the cut stems from these plants into the soil like where was that cluster of sameness planting similar plants or same plants I should say right next to each other just sticking the cut stems one inch into the soil they will grow very well in the sand and eventually the root systems will reach down into the soil layer, the inch deep soil layer. Sometimes the water is deep. You don't want to stick your hand in there. You can do it via tongs, which is how I did it with the other tank I set up first. But this one, even though the plants are going to take a few weeks probably to respond, well, apparently their root systems begin to grow in a matter of days. Filling up. Take a closer look at some of the plants in here. With time, the plants will look better. They're just cuttings. But I think I'm gonna like this real well. It's been about 10 days since I set up this large tank here. I had put some algae in it. It was just sort of attached to some of the leaves that I had in the tank, these dead leaves that I dropped in there to begin to establish uh, microfauna and microflora habitat. And you can see that the algae is starting to spread. The water's even a little greenish. Algae is not a bad thing to have in the tank. It is there for a reason. It's result of adequate sunlight that the other plants need. And normally the other plants will outcompete it for nutrients in the tank, but this is a new tank and it is not over 50% planted yet. The plants will grow and spread and I may add a few to get up in that ideal 75% or so range, but in the meantime, I have added in some Tropisternus water scavenger beetles and also some water boatmen, and both of those feed on algae. 
I also plan to put some blue ram's horn snails in this tank. And between those three organisms, as well as the seed shrimp or ostracods, I expect that this is a temporary algae situation and that it will soon go away. I'll let you know how it goes. See how my algae warriors are doing here in the tank. See that water boatman back there, right through the middle there. It's a little too far off to be in focus, but I've been watching that one in particular make its way around <laughs> gathering algae, just like that, feeding on it. It's funny that it's carrying that clump up towards the top here, just sort of right on cue. Not to be confused with the uh, back swimmers here in the water column. The back swimmers are always kind of hovering. They always remind me of like Star Wars ships in space, just floating around in the water column, whereas the water boatmen they're typically down near the bottom feeding on detritus of one kind or another. Really gig beetles. Zipping around on the top. Always fun to see the various levels in this tank. Always makes me think of canopy in rainforest, the understory below. So much life in this tank, always so many moving things. Just a real pleasure to watch all the time. And there in the backdrop, the Santa Rita Mountains that I love so much, and from where many of these organisms were originally sourced. I'm working on captive breeding programs for all of them, setting up dedicated tanks for individual organisms, species, I should say, and paludariums in particular for the diving beetles can see that they collect a droplet, or a bubble, I should say, of air from the surface, and then they take it down and they'll breathe underwater for quite some time. Just can't take my eyes off this. Finding myself very <laughs> happy and relaxed, of course, and watching all of these things. It's a nice escape, but far less productive in my life otherwise. <laughs> Not complaining. Just getting started, really. Lots more videos to come. Been a few days since I took any video of this tank. There had been an algae problem down here on the bottom, and that same algae now is retracting quite a bit. Not a hundred percent sure that it's retracting because I added in water boatmen and a few of the ostracods, <laughs> by a few I mean hundreds, and then also some Tropisternus water scavenger beetles. But in any case, the retracting of algae is favorable. And I had also purchased these ram's horn snails to help take care of the algae problem. I bought them as blue ram's horns. They don't seem to be very blue to me, but I'm going to put them in the tank anyway. Perhaps they will become more blue with time. 
and see if they help to keep some of the algae down. It had started to grow on some of the plants too, which was becoming a cause of concern for me. I almost hate to add them at this point because the algae really has receded quite a bit and I'm not sure they are needed anymore. I guess, and I'm just thinking out loud here as I often do, that I will just put a few in there and see how things go. Don't want to overdo it.